everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're going to talk about something called the basal ganglia, also known as the basal nuclei. Now, the first thing you need to be aware of is when it comes to movement, it initiates, at least voluntary movement, will initiate from the motor cortex. Now, the motor cortex is located in the frontal lobe, and if, as an example, I want to tell my legs to move so I can walk, I send a signal from my motor cortex down to my spinal cord. It synapses or speaks to the next neuron, which goes out of my spinal cord to the muscles in my legs to tell them to contract. So that means for movement, it's a two neuron chain descending from the brain, made up of an upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron. Now this isn't the whole story because we need to modulate this movement. So for example, we need to send a signal that can help us initiate a movement and smooth the movement out. And we also need to send a signal that can help modulate the movement by allowing us to maintain balance, posture, and muscle tone. Okay, so in addition to the upper and lower motor neuron, these modulatory pathways include that of the basal ganglia deep in the brain and also the cerebellum, which is the small brain located at the back and below the brain. The basal ganglia helps us initiate and smooth out motor movement and the cerebellum helps us maintain muscle tone, balance and stability. So let's talk about the basal ganglia. So let's orientate ourselves looking at the neuroanatomy. We have performed a coronal section Separating out the front of the brain, we're looking deep within the brain now, what can we see? Well, remember you're gonna have your lateral ventricles, your third ventricle, then either side you've got your thalamus. Now below your thalamus, you've got a group of neurons called the subthalamic nuclei, and you can see lateral to the thalamus, you've got something called the globus pallidus, separated out into the globus pallidus interna and globus pallidus externa. Then you've got something called the putamen and the caudate nucleus, which together in the basal ganglia, we're gonna term the striatum. So we're gonna group them together, refer to them just as the striatum. Then if we go down to the medulla, you'll see an important component called the substantia nigra, which means black substance. These are neurons or a group of neurons that produce dopamine, very important in motor movement. All right, you can see that when we wanna move, or at least when we want the basal ganglia to help us initiate motor movement and smooth motor movement out, there's complex neural circuitry that's happening. Simply put, you've got a direct pathway and an indirect pathway firing off in these different regions. When we look at the direct pathway, it's a signal that goes from the motor cortex, and this signal is starting off saying, as an example, I want my legs to move so I can walk. So it says, can I tell my legs to move? Can I tell my legs to move? Sending this signal down to the striatum. Now this is an excitatory signal, and what the end outcome is, from the motor cortex to the striatum, from the striatum to the globus pallidus interna, from the globus pallidus interna to the thalamus, and from the thalamus back to the motor cortex, or back to the cortex, it says, can I move my legs? And the output is, yes, you can, okay? Now, it's a complex pathway because some of these neurons in this, what we've termed direct pathway, are excitatory, some are inhibitory. But the end outcome from the direct pathway is, can I, I wanna move my legs? Yes, you can. Okay? Now, there's also an indirect pathway which goes from the motor cortex, again to the striatum, this time from the striatum to the globus pallidus externa, then to the subthalamic nuclei, and then back to the globus pallidus interna, so it can go back through this pathway. This is an inhibitory signal. So the indirect pathway starts off with, can I move my legs? And the outcome is, no, you cannot. So you've got the direct pathway which is saying, go, 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 and the indirect pathway which is saying stop, stop, stop. So what's happening here, Am I, how come when I go to walk I'm not doing this, or if I wanna move my hands I'm not having this resting tremor? How do I initiate this movement, and how do I smooth this movement out? Well, this is where the substantia nigra comes in, and this is where these neurons that produce dopamine come into play. For example, some of these neurons project out to the direct pathway, and excite it. So dopamine excites the already excitatory pathway. So it reinforces the direct pathway which says, yes, let's move. And you can initiate that movement. However, remember you've got the inhibitory pathway which is trying to stop that movement. So dopaminergic neurons which are project projecting out from the substantia nigra are going to the indirect pathway and are inhibited, inhibiting it. So remember the indirect pathway was an inhibitory pathway. So now dopamine is inhibiting an inhibitory pathway, so if you're inhibiting it, it's not going to now tell the direct pathway to stop. 
So now what we have is we can initiate motor movement and we've smoothed motor movement out so we don't get this resting tremor. In Parkinson's disease, these dopaminergic neurons projecting from the sub substantia nigra to the striatum are dying off. That dopamine is no longer there, which means we're getting signals that are saying start, stop, start, stop. So some people with Parkinson's disease find it very difficult to initiate a motor movement. So they can't start walking. Once they start, they're not necessarily too bad. But when they're resting, they also have a resting tremor because they've got that stop, start signal that's constantly happening. So this is the basal ganglia. This is the important role that it plays in initiating motor movement and smoothing out motor movement.